what's your relationship with KD like now? Um. Yo, peace. Welcome back to 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. I'm Carmelo Anthony here with my co-host. Right, you should put a Camaro, the human Durag, Flap. You know what I mean? This is a Wave Sports and Entertainment Original presented by Prize Picks. And we back. But we got a special guest in the motherfucking building, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's four-time NBA champ, Olympic gold medalist, former defensive player of the year, and host of the Draymond Green Show, none other than... Draymond Green, what's good, my what's guy? Up, man? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sorry, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying? I'm 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 saying? I'm I'm part of the left over here. <laughs> Had to enter you like a heavyweight boxer, bro, because you out here, like, That's you know crazy. what I mean? Like, been doing this for a minute, you know what I mean? Representing, always one of the premier, like, yo, I want to hear what this guy got to say, voices in the NBA, as a fan. You know nah, what I'm I appreciate like, that, man. And when you do your show, you know what I mean? It's very... It's it's for hoopers, but it's also for like just like yo, let me. What is this guy thinking? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So, I appreciate that. You know nah, I appreciate it, man. You know, I appreciate you, big bro. You know, it's it's an Always honor love. to be here. Um, I got a chance to spend time with this dude at the Olympics in 2016, and it it changed my outlook on shit. Just to get the game, and and for you to be willing to give it. You know Indeed. what I'm saying, like. You come in this league, everybody ain't, ain't ain't willing to give that, you know, but the guys that came up with you, you, Bron, even getting to know C now, like the game y'all been willing to give, I appreciate respect, that. Respect, respect. But yeah, bro, like I feel like with me, like it's a podcast to teach the game, but to also teach the game. Like not, right, right, like, right, not right. like Both just sides basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like how to go through this, but still be you, you know? And like, for the homie on the street, like, like now nah, the eyes against me too, bro, still to this day, you know? But there's a way of going about this and staying true to who you are, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like I can sleep at night knowing I stay true to who I am. And that's, that's what it's all about for me. So hold up, speaking of your show, right? The power of that. Like, I, I don't think people talk about enough. The idea of controlling your own narrative, right? Mm -hmm. When did that, I know when it happened for me. When did that happen for you to be like, ah, you know what? I'm tired of these motherfuckers saying this, saying that. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. I'm going to control my own narrative. I'm going to take a business approach to this. Where you learn that from? Because... There's been athletes before in other sports that came to me and, and was telling me the same thing, mm -hmm. right? But back then it was more like, you was a rebel if you did that. Yo, mm -hmm. I'm only talking to this, I'm not talking to the media. I, I'm a, you, you, was, you was ousted for that, mm -hmm. right? Now it's considered player empowerment yeah. in a sense. When, when did you get that? I think a lot of that came from, and like I just said, watching y'all and, and what y'all were able, have been able to do coming through this league. I feel like y'all the first, really the first real wave of that, you know what I'm saying, of coming through and like, I'm owning my stuff, I'm doing it this way, I'm taking advantage of this opportunity and, I, and starting to connect the dots. And so for me, in coming in and, and watching that, you just watch till the time is right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like so many times now, these, you know, you got guys that try to jump off the pot too fast. You know what I'm saying? And so, for, you know, I watched that and I'm like, all right, I know I want to get into this space and I know why I want to do it. But if I'm 100% honest with you, I didn't know the power that it had until I did it. Right. I was just doing it from a standpoint of like, I feel like I'm really good at media. Like I'm, I'm really good at speaking. I can entertain, uh, you know, I can draw a crowd in. Like, let's was do that, it. Was that your, not to cut you off, was that your form of, Expression though, is that was that your form of like, all right, I feel comfortable, I feel confident, I feel vulnerable enough that I'm going to say this type of shit. Right. Like only me gonna say that. Like, one hundred percent. Okay. Because I feel like that's the only way that I could really speak how I speak, you know, and speak and stay true to who I am. Right. Not being tailored, not being driven to like, yo, we kind of want you to stand over here, 
Like, nah, I'm gonna pick what I'm gonna pick where I'm standing and I can stand on that and I got my own shit to do that. Right. And 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 going out and then like starting it and building it, then I realized like, oh shit, the power in me having this platform, the power in knowing like if some go down, people know exactly where to go to hear ex- what I gotta say. Right. Right. And I didn't realize the power in it until I started doing it. And I'm like, yo. I always wanted to control my own narrative, right? Like, I think my shit gets spent just as crazy as anybody, you know? And I always wanted to control it, but I didn't necessarily know how to do that. You know, try all these other things. And I think this one organically happened for me. You know, like it organically came together for me. And... There's no turning back. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, nah, nah. You open the door, lit. Yeah, nah, nah. You Obviously lit. not. Yeah, nah. <laughs> who did you look up to? Like, who was you? Who was the players? Like, yo, this is who I'm going. If I'm going to make it, this is who. This is my list right here. That's who I'm. That's who I'm modeling my my, my game after. Who was those players? What was an interesting thing for me was, you know, coming out. I had no position. Like, right. You know, so I. There was this word, and it was a label, and it was called a tweener when I came out. Yeah, that's a fact. And it was the, being net, being labeled a tweener was a death sentence. Yeah, yeah. It was not I a mean, good thing. You understand? You, 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 you don't have a right. you don't have a position on the floor. They don't know where to play you at. Right. That's Absolutely. A tweener. It wasn't elite they, wing. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> You're the size of a you know a small forward, but you really a power forward. Like they don't know where to play you. Like right. that's a tweener. Exactly. So I, I like. So I had that label immediately. Grow, growing up though, for me, I used to watch a few different guys and try to put that into my game. Mm. And who I became in the NBA, it was funny because we was talking about this last night, me and Trav. Who I became in the NBA is totally different than the way I grew up playing basketball. Absolutely. Uh, like, but people don't, see, I know that, but people don't know that. But like, people don't know that. Like, that's why I asked the question. I grew up, score, score, score. Right. I play help side defense, but I ain't really checking like that. Like, I'm scoring the basketball. I can always pass, but I'm scoring. Bucket getter. And so for me, Damn, I bucket. grew up taking stuff, like pulling stuff from, from people game. Pulling from mellow me and post. I used to fucking hit the fadeaways and all that. <laughs> like, that was my game. Paul Millsap, I used to watch. Like, I'm like, mm. Paul Millsap, undersized, four man, like moving. I watched Paul Millsap. So I used to try to pull from Paul Millsap game. Chuck Hayes. I used to try to pull from Chuck Hayes. Ooh. Undersized, five, great defender. So I watched Chuck Hayes game. I tried to pull from him. And then going back and watching like Dennis Rodman, I was blessed to grow up in the state of Michigan when Ben Wallace was coming through there. I'm mm. watching Ben Wallace like, yo, I need to be like that. Like, I ain't quite got she skill. She, she, Rasheed Wallace is one of the most skilled people I've ever been Indeed. around. Indeed, shout out to she. Shout like, out to she. Hey, shout out to she. I ain't got she skill, but like, I'm watching Ben Wallace and he gooning people. Like, that's what I'm growing. And so I'm pulling from all of these guys, like different things and trying to mold it into this thing. It ended up not becoming who I, it ended up not being who I became though. And I just, and going to the Warriors, me trying to be a scorer would have never worked. Right. It was more of what David Lee was giving. And David he Lee. was already really good at that thing. So I had no way to create value like and that. And he was a tweener. Exactly. Right. <laughs> David he, was, was, he, was, he was the <laughs> ultimate tweener. Next though. legend, David Lee. <laughs> <laughs> like, shout out to D. Lee. David but Lee. He, was a, he was a tweener. <laughs> he was that. I had no, like, so I couldn't do what D. Lee was doing and get on the floor right. because he was already good at that. He's an all-star. Yeah. So I had to kind of recreate myself in a sense. I always think like if guys had to do what I had to do to become what, like they'd never make it. That's a fact. And I, I, don't, I don't think people understand that. I don't think people look at it that way because we, again, we, we spoke about this previously, how hard it is to even have a chance to get there, right. let alone stay there, let alone Find a role that keeps you there. And it may not be the role that, that you want, right? This man said he grew up scoring, shooting fadeaway. Like that's what he grew up on. 
he don't do that in the NBA because that's not what calls for him to do, right? right? Now, if he went to a team and uh, got drafted by a team and they said, okay, Draymond, you can, we playing through you, I, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that would have been a different story. But now yeah. you got to figure out what you bring to be the winning piece, yeah. right? I can't, I ain't shooting like Steph and Clay and these niggas. I ain't doing this like, uh -huh. I, I, I got to be intelligent. I got to be smart. I got to really learn the ins and outs of the game, angles, and I got to really become a student of the game. I got to defend everybody on, on this top of that, floor. I understand my dynamic makeup of my team. And I don't want to speak for you, but this is just my perspective. I understand my dynamic makeup of the people on my team, the, 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 the humans. Yeah. yeah. So ah, I got to... I got to step into this lane and I got to own it. Yeah. And he took a stance, which is, which is why it's commendable and honorable because he, he took a stance and say, I'm going to own this lane and whatever comes with it, comes with it. Right? Where a lot of people may be like, nah, I ain't, I'm going to fall back. I'm going to do it this way. Coaches are getting on me. I'm, I'm standing tall on what I believe in because it's deeper than what everybody else think. Right. I know what's inside the locker room and I know what the makeup of this team really needs for me. Right. We I've to been dealing be with these guys. We've we, we been talking. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, to, to, to have that energy. Right. You know. So it's like that's playing against that was a little different because you competing. You I'm trying to fuck him up. He's trying to stop fuck me up and whatever happens in between that it happens and we go. Live life. Like, you Absolutely. get what I'm saying? But if it's not that, like, now I can see, looking back at it, like, why he be getting niggas mad? <laughs> <laughs> he be getting niggas mad as fuck. I know you was waiting for Yo, the first line, but I understand That's fact. why these niggas be mad. Because for one, these young niggas out here today, they don't know how to respond to that type of Energy, That's a fact. right? It's a different type of energy, so you stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And now be, everything is you magnify, and, and 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 he do shit that magnifies, puts you know he throw salt on the shit. Absolutely. But the, these this younger generation don't know how to handle that. Right. That's right. So it looks like bullying. Now I don't like to use that word, but. It looks that energy is like overpowering, right. like mm -hmm. so. Don't nobody know how to react to that, so it looked like it looked crazy. It looked crazy. So anything that happens adds on to the fucking the way it looks, right, the right, perspective right. of this shit. He like, man, look, I'm not changing. This is how I play. I can't. If he was in the NFL, they'd be like, that's passion, that's fire. I can't change. <laughs> but here's a, here's that's my question. crazy. Like I'm, I'm, where did it go? Because when I came <laughs> in. Where that's what it, it was. That's what it was. Like, that's yeah. what it was yeah. when I came in. Yeah. You catching an elbow on the chest like, first? No, yo, no problem. Tip off. Like, just so you know, like, don't come back here. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm putting yeah. my shoulder through your chest. I, <laughs> see, the part, <laughs> the part that didn't catch. <laughs> that's my fucking rookie year, man. This nigga putting his shoulder through my chest. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, and then he's talking to this referee crazy. And then they like, yo, Draymond talked to the referees crazy. I'm like, nah. Bro. So what I watched coming in was, <laughs> was that? Was these guys like, yo, call the fucking foul. You motherfucker. And the referee like, uh, Melo, I, I, I missed it. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry, like, sorry, buddy. That's what I saw coming And then everybody, now everybody right. like, he talked to the, like, bro, that's what I knew. Like, that's, that's what I know. That's right. what I saw. So when you ask me, where did it go? It went back to that. It ain't no more like, I got to grind for a bucket. Like, I ain't got, oh shit, I gotta figure out how to beat Draymond off. I gotta fuck. Like, damn, if I be, if I go past him, I know he come, like, it was hard. Like, I don't, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't see double teams. You know, I, yeah. I got double teams every fucking play. Like, every, you know, every single play, I got double team. You get what I'm saying? So, I don't see that no more, yeah. right? But to, your, to answer your question, the game is about, a, even more of about a bucket today how you can get your bucket, how many buckets you can get. Yo. Right? And that's been like a point. 200. That's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, NBA, that's 2K <laughs> shit. But that's what they saying now. It's like, and you, so boom, we got one of the top scorers ever to play the game. 
one of the top defenders ever played the game. Both of y'all perspectives on this, like, I guess it's an opinion. I, I mean, a, a fact is is backed by data. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's an objective fact. Ask the fact. fucking, ask the question. Man. The shit is, ask the question. The shit is, they saying, I'm not saying, because I enjoy it. They saying that, like, offense is prioritized mm -hmm. in today. The, in, in, today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, you know, where's the days of, like, you know, guys you know, putting the clamps on, on the franchise play on the other team, da 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 that they're prioritizing scoring over defense and they're adjusting rules and shit like that for, for that purpose. My opinion, number one, before I go there, I remember watching you in the playoffs versus the Los Angeles Lakers and Luke Walden guarding your high side and just forcing you baseline to the trap. And that black, that man's pulled over in the black. That was Black a being the bottom low man, which is usually the big because you play centers is pulled over to the other block, and they're just forcing him to the rim, forcing him to the double team. I remember watching that in the playoffs. But back to your you question. You got one shot. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to let you get that, but you got, to that point, you got one, one move. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's spot? Your space, the space is like, it's us three right here. That's the space. Right. So you got to figure out how, I got to figure out how to get right here. Mm -hmm. Is that why you focus so much on small spots? Spot, small spots. Yes, and that, that's train? part of the game is missing, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Dre. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> go ahead, Dre. That was the level that these guys were operating at. And you look at it now, I think 100% the game is made for the offense. Like, as a defender, you almost have no rights. And everything is tailored to the offense. Like, you think about the rip through rule that guys do. Oh yeah. They said they was taking that out the game. Where you couldn't rip through and get the foul, they just wasn't, it was supposed to be a no call. I watch guys do it still, every day. The only person that don't get the call when they do it now is James Harden. They changed the rule for James Harden. <laughs> He's actually the only person that don't get the Sacrifice call Sacrificial land, you gotta like, be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, all of the rules are freedom of movement. Like, man, you had to work to get to a spot to get the ball when I came in the league. Now, it's like, if you're trying to get to that spot, and you come, if I step in front of that spot and chuck you, they call it a foul. Right. It's like, no, I have the same right to that spot right there that he got. Like, if he can move there, if I move there before him, just because that's where he's trying to go, I got there first. Right. Now they're going to call it a foul. And so it's a totally different game now. And like, no disrespect to these guys. I can't score like these guys in the NBA scoring. I get that, and I got the utmost respect for the great players in the NBA. But like, let's not fool ourselves. Like all these seventies happening for a reason. Like, Yo, what we, like, we, didn't, we didn't just not, <laughs> we didn't oh, just not shit. see these things. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy for so long, and then not all of a sudden seventies yeah. just popping up every week. Like again, yes, I do think guys now are more skilled as like. With anything in the world, it gets better with time. Right. So I do think guys are more skilled now than ever. But these 70s popping up every week for a yes. reason. Like, <laughs> like, Luka Doncic is fucking incredible. Joel is incredible. Dame, incredible. Book, incredible. Steph, like, oh, oh they Spider incredible, oil. man. Incredible. Donovan, incredible. Like, they're great. But like, 70s great. 70. This 70 <laughs> points. Like, 70 burgers is crazy. Come on, man. 70? 70 is crazy. That's a lot of yeah. points, bro. We're taking a brief break from today's episode to let you know that Prize Picks got you covered when it comes to helping you make some bread. Mm -hmm. We in the second half of the NBA season, and Prize Picks is the easiest and the most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into 25 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000. Pause Picks also allows you to pick combo projections across football and basketball with specials so you can support all your teams while still cashing in. How lit is that? You know what I mean? I got a couple projections of mine already. Matter of fact, Melo, I got a couple more or less options for you, my G. This oh, time is pop culture edition. You know what I'm saying? Pop culture, we out here. Okay. More or less, after an incredible Super Bowl performance, Usher is going on tour this summer, right? Got the tour jumping off. So more or less, one show that Mello is attending this summer. How many Usher joints you go hit? More than one. Last month, there was rumors that Jay-Z is dropping an album this year, 2024. 
Rock Nation said, that's news to us. You know what I mean? So the question is, Mellow, more or less, one Hove album in the next five years. He would do one. One album in the next couple verses. Couple, yeah. couple verses. Sprinkle a couple verses you know I mean? here and there, but he, <laughs> he might drop something. Shout the Hove, man. Yo, listen. Lock him in at one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, listen. You see how easy that was, man? Super simple. So listen, visit prizepicks.com slash 7pm and use the promo code 7pm for deposit match up to $100. Now back to the show. You spoke about how we, our relationship, right? And we've been in situations competitively on the court, whatever. So because of that, I understand your mindset when it comes to approaching the game of basketball, right? So by you being a, away from the game, coming back, what was that transition like? Like, what was it? Because I, I'm asking this question this way because you mentioned something about retirement, right? And I told him, or I told the world, if an athlete is calling out saying they thinking about retiring, leave him. Believe him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Now I got somebody else on here who thought about yeah, retirement yeah. in the midst of still trying to figure his own personal shit out and the team shit out, right? right. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Like, what, what got you to the point like, yo, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this I'm shit. It, up. This, it ain't worth it no more. Because I've I been there. Mm -hmm. So I, wanted, I, want, I want you to talk. I think a few things got me to that space. Uh, number one, like, You know, I was going into these games and like, don't get me wrong, I've done my fair share of shit. I stand on everything I do. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't blame what I've done on anybody else. I stand on it. But like, it felt like I'm going into these games and I'm being targeted by shit. Right. You know, and, and it's like, <laughs> all right, like I'm, you know, I ain't no dummy. Like I'm seeing stuff, you know, and it's like, man, don't, I feel like I'm getting targeted. And so, you know, I'm just watching it play out and, you know, kind of rolling with it. And, you know, in, in, in doing that, I'm, I'm starting to approach the game differently. Like, I'm going to games like, all right, man, I know I'm coming out at the five-minute mark. Like, let me get there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let me just get to the five-minute mark. I know I'm coming out. I'm sitting at eight. 10 minutes roll around on the second quarter clock. Oh, fuck. Swining down, like, here I come. I'm getting the eight. All right, here I go. Go get the halftime. Go in, I do my eight. I, I do my eight, I'm at halftime. All right, I got to get through one more half. Just be mindful of. I'm counting down minutes in the game. Which is bad. Of when I'm going to sit, like, right. like. Almost like I'm doing a bid. Like I'm counting down yeah. in the game. And so I'm not enjoying this. Like I, I, I'm just literally out here for like, I'm getting a paycheck. I got to play like, all right. I've never played basketball for that reason. For a paycheck. Like, nah, this, it just happened to pay good. But like I, I played basketball because I grew up. That's, that's what we did. Like, and so... I'm feeling that, and then at the same time, all of these things are happening. You know, Rudy Gobert thing happened. Everybody going crazy, losing their mind. In the moment, I ain't feel like it was bad as it was once I watched it. You it was, know what I'm saying? It was once, crazy. Once I watched it, I'm like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. I got to the locker room. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm bro, I'm gonna tell like, you, shit was bugged out. Should, I got to the locker room, I start watching the video, I'm like, all right, I got him. I got him. Okay. I must I be crazy because I was like, yo, that shit wasn't that bad. Huh. Like, I must be, I must be I super. <laughs> the haze. <laughs> That's the piff. Bro, all of a sudden the video keep going. I'm like, all right, cool. I still got him. Like, damn, man, I got him for a long time. Like, I'm, I'm now looking and I'm like, yo, this is wild. Like, I can this. This went on way longer than I realized. In that moment, you feel like it's like, you, just, you, know you just iterated that. You felt like you was in the pen. Absolutely. So 
So it, it, even more of a reason why you ain't let go. Like it's just fuck it. Like I'm I'm on the yard. Absolutely. So I'm like, so then that happened. You know what I'm saying? I get suspended two games. I get suspended those five games. I'm literally just working out, counting down the games. I ain't thinking nothing about this suspension. I'm like, all right, that's five games, whatever. Like, let me let me just stay working out, stay in shape, and five games will be up. I'm back. So I'm not thinking nothing, none, none of this. Like, come back, I'm playing. And then shortly thereafter, the Nurkish thing happened. Then I get suspended, and it's like, you know, I have, I have a conversation with Adam. Like, before I'm suspended, I had this conversation. Like, I do my interview with the lead security, and then me and Adam talk. Like, so before anything comes out, any suspension or anything, we talk. And I'm just like, Adam, I'm done with this shit. Like, this ain't fun for me. Like, this ain't worth it. Because now, and what really, what really had me thinking about retiring, I'm like, it's not worth it. My mom's getting death threats. People on my wife's page, like, oh, I know he's beating you like this. Like, oh, my God. Like, he's, he's at home beating you and your kids. And I'm just looking at this shit like, the dark side of the, of the game. Yeah. This is wild. Like, and so also seeing what my people was going through because of this, I'm like, yeah, this ain't, this ain't really, like, this ain't that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I ain't crazy. People try to paint me like I'm crazy, say I need help. I'm not crazy at all. But, like, I'll hurt you over my family. Like, like, I, like I think most people will. Like, That's a no-brainer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so... Once it starts reaching there, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is really worth that for me. Like, and so to keep going through these things now where like people judging my character, like, you know, I'm when that happened, I I forced myself to listen to everything everyone was saying. Because normally we block out the noise, you know what I'm saying? Like we block it out and you just keep going. But I'm like, nah, I need to, like. Maybe I'm missing something, you know what I'm saying? So I need to, so I, like for a couple of days, I sat in my man cave and like I just listened to everything everyone said. And it was fascinating to me. Like media wise? Media, like. People, fans. People, fans, like. Players. Pl players for sure. Like I just listened to what everybody was saying. And it was like, yo. They taking it like they these they're taking shots at my character as a, as a man as a human being. I've worked too hard to become who I am. Just to like be my character to be questioned over this game. Like I've done everything I need to do in this game. So for my character to now come in question as a man as a father. As a husband, like you beating your wife, that's nuts. Crazy. Like, and so for, for my, I'm like, yeah, I don't really need this. And so I'm having this conversation with Adam and I'm like, Adam, this ain't it. Like I'm watching like the, 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 the news cycle. It ain't no news cycle. The news cycle is me. You, every channel, I'm the news cycle. And he's like, well, Draymond, like, what are you talking about? Like all the talking heads and he's like, because you, you can move past that. I'm like, yeah, but it ain't just talking heads, though. Like, this has gone way further than just talking heads. Now, yes, these talking heads are pushing some crazy narrative that, but, like, this has gone way beyond Stephen A on first take. Like, yeah. this is, like, wildfire now. And so I'm sitting and I'm weighing, like, what's this worth? Like, like, and I told Adam, I said, Adam, I've made money. I've won championships. I've won gold medals. I've been, like, I've done the things, man. Like, this ain't worth that. Like, it's just not. I got kids. Like, my kids going to school. Kids, like, yo, your dad choked someone. Your dad, and I'm, <clears throat> your, your dad kids, suspended. Kids are blunt, too. Yeah. Kids are, you know, man, listen. So my kids coming home, like, daddy, did you? Did you choke? This? Did you hit this guy? I'm like, oh shit! Like, yeah. like, this is a new level. Those conversations are different, you know. Yeah. And so now I'm having to have conversations with my kids, like, and I'm explaining, like, 
I'm on the basketball court. I'm out here competing. This is not right. Like, I shouldn't have done this. This isn't me walking around on the streets, though. Uh -huh. Like, so your, your friend, dad, may go to work and not excusing anything I'm doing, but your friend going, your friend, dad, going to work and getting into a fight with someone is totally different than me going to work and getting into it. Like, we're actually competing. It's physical. It's like, right. it's a, by no means is this right and is this what I should have done. But also don't allow your friends to try to make it like your dad is like. Right, right. This ain't like, like your like pops you. fighting in the break room. Like, that con that, con I'm going to prison that conversation you got to have early, earlier mm -hmm. than you didn't expect it. Oh, uh, yeah. Like we, our kids, it's, it's, they got to they gotta, they gotta grow quick. They pick everything mm -hmm. up, and, social media. Yeah, of your because face. we have to keep constantly feeding them information and information and information, things that our parents our parents was probably holding away from us. So like, oh, we're not going to tell him to 15, he 16. Enough. He ain't mm -hmm. old enough. Yeah. We got to have those conversations with our kids at seven, yeah. eight, nine, like super early, man. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate, right? And, but it's fortunate because we get, we get to have those conversations, mm -hmm. right? We privileged to have, we put in a situation where we can have those conversations to understand the dynamics of a lot of shit. But, that shit is hard, man. No matter how many conversations he have with his kids and sit down and explain to him, <clears throat> this is what's happening. They don't, they still got to go deal with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. them kids in school still say the same shit. Yeah, Absolutely. kids say, yeah, yeah. kids say the darnest things, man. Mm -hmm. No filter. Anything. No oh. filter. You want the truth? Yo, go talk to yeah, the kids. Super blunt. Right. So oh. I was losing it on that, bro. Yeah. And I told Adam, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, I want to do this, and this like, it's just not adding up for me. Like, I'm also struggling. Like, I'm fucked up, Adam. I am fucked up right now. And, like, I'm about to go to some, like, counseling. <laughs> Give me some, like, because yeah. I had done some counseling work before, but I didn't stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? I go, kind of stop, go, stop, go, stop. And what I ended up learning was that there's different levels to this shit. And, how, how, how deep you want to go? You're only uncovering what you go to uncover. And so I knew there were some things for me that, like, I needed to uncover, but I was afraid because once you uncover it, do it. you better go do the work, yeah. you know? And so I'm like, there's some things that I'm not really ready to face. And when this thing happened and I'm talking to Adam, I'm like, yo, I know I have some things that I need to go uncover. I'm going to uncover them. And he's like, listen, you sound like you need time. I need a, I do need time. We're going to suspend you indefinitely. We're going to keep having conversations. You'll be talking to us. We'll be checking in on you. And you let me know what's your progress. We'll do progress checks and we'll see where you're at and we'll keep checking in. And man, I, gained, I always had a bunch of respect for Adam. Adam's great. But I gained so much respect for him because it went from like, yo, like, you're the worst human being in the world to like, nah, let's figure this out. Like, yeah. let's figure this out together. You're, let's, you're, you're a man now. You're a human being. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not just an asset. Right. Let's, Absolutely. Let's, let's really right. talk on that level. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. let's figure this out. And so then conversations with myself, like, it was unlike a process they've, they, they've ever done. Right. Like, it was totally different. It wasn't like, Yo, you're suspended, you're this. It's like, nah, what you're talking about is real. Let's focus on that. It's let's, called a suspension, but what we're really doing is trying to get you to where you need to be. Absolutely. Right. That wouldn't have happened if he wouldn't have took accountability to say, yo, I need help. Yeah, yeah. Right? Not everybody else saying Draymond needs help. Mm -hmm. Like, he had to come and say, I need help. Like, oh. I, I need somebody to help me figure this shit out because right. that shit is hard. Again, thinking retirement, I mean, you're completely at whiff's end. Like you're mm -hmm. just, you done, you done look, saw every scenario ever. You played it out in your head. You like, I'm done. But that goes I want to get away from this shit. Mm -hmm. This shit ain't worth it. Yeah. A but lot of people, well, I'm gonna let you get yeah. to that, but a lot of people, a lot of athletes feel that way. A lot of athletes feel like, Shit that he talking about 
but they don't take the, the accountability or the ownership to be like, you know what? Like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to go do what I got to do. Like, I'm going to figure this shit out. I can't do it by myself. Like, our lives is constantly, it's like that. We got bank accounts full of money. Everything in the world we got. Family, I, I, we got everything. But if you ain't taking that ownership and shit, how can you go get the help? How can you step out there and be like, you know what, fuck it. So that's real. So I'm saying that because I had to say, fuck the game. I'm getting away from it. Nobody could talk to me about basketball at that moment. Because it's, it's no need for it. Is it worth it, right? Yeah. I always said, does the game love me the way that, that I love the game? Mm -hmm. If not, I'm done with it. And at the point, that's what made me say, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like, I'm fucked this shit. <laughs> yeah, fuck you know what I'm saying? But it was like one foot in, one foot out because, right, right. you know, you got people that's encouraging you. Then you got a, a group of people that's just like, uh, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, you know what? Yeah. I ain't talking to you, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 no, <laughs> I ain't talking to you. You'll make me jump and just say, why you do it? Mm -hmm. No. And then right. you got a group of people that's like, nah, what the fuck are you doing? So right. you hit the but, pump fake at the, at the garden. Like, yeah, it's ah. like that was a triple threat for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had the triple threat, but I'm like, yeah. you know, I had to really talk to this group of people right here. Like, the people that was saying like, fuck no. It's like, why are you telling me right. fuck no? Like, <clears throat> because I'm already done. So you got it. It's going to take extra energy Welcome back to talk me back into doing this. Give me some good reasons why. But what you, you had said in an earlier episode that that is kind of Silver's flow. As opposed to like the you know previously like with Stern it was like more Stern you know what I'm saying no pun intended but like with Silver he's more like a player like he'll he'll get on a human level with you mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I mean for me Adam was on that train of the change of culture in the NBA mm -hmm. right the, the, that curve I was always talking. To. That curve in the NBA was happening, and Adam was starting to be the helm of that curve, right? Stern did what he did. He established this as one of the biggest businesses, one of the biggest brands, one of the biggest logos in the whole world. Adam come in and put his one-two to it, right? But now let's have conversation, players. Like, we, we, if y'all want empowerment, here what we got to say. And let's come together and see how we can partner so we can empower our athletes as well. And the minute he did that, everything shot about the roof in the NBA. Players, everybody doing what they doing, content. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's sky's the limit. So for him to step up there and stand on that and allow the players to kind of grow with the game as well too, right? Not just getting the check. I saw motherfuckers be hugging the shit out of him at the draft and shit. He's like, yo, I, I know you got me, B. I've been trying to hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> this my dog right here. Uh, he, he a real dude. Like, he a real dude. Shout he out real to dude. him, man. Real yo, dude. you know what I'm saying? You were saying like it affected you on a bunch of different levels, like, you know, family, obviously, but then also, you know, you got your, your team, your coach, Steve Kerr, like where did they figure into to all of that? Like, they did were, they reach uh, out and like, were they supportive? Was it like a... He's they, still playing, bro. They, they were. They, he's so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, Trent. That's that fan. You're New York Knicks fan, bro. <laughs> man, that man got I just shit. asked him what the nigga yeah, on the train is doing. No, it was, it was, honestly, though, it was great. I, I wasn't with them the entire time. Okay. Like, until it was like, yo, I'm, I'm in a better space. Like, and... I'll, I'll even entertain thinking about playing basketball. I wasn't with them the entire time. Yeah. I was at my house with my family, totally different city, wasn't with them at all. Right. And it was great for both of us because with all of the stuff going on, I needed a break from all of this stuff. Like, and they needed a break from me. Like, At no point in this am I like, Yo, I'm sick of this and no, no, they needed a break from me. I needed a break from them, they needed a break from me. But they were very supportive, you know. Um, like I had a real conversation with them uh, be before the suspension even came out. Like, 
yo, I'm not sure this is what I want to do. And I just want y'all to know, like, you hear from me, like, this is before I did an interview with the league or anything. We had a conversation. I'm like, yo, I'm just not sure I want this. Like, and it crushed me because this team we got, I love being with these dudes. It's a fun team to be around. It's a great group. Like, chemistry is great. And so I'm, I'm kind of in this space of like, and I told them like, yo, I'm in this space of like, where I love being around y'all. Like, I love coming to work every day being with this group of guys, I need y'all in my life right now, but like, I don't need y'all. Right. Like, it was a very weird space. It's like, I need y'all, like. So a part of me is like, yo, I need to be coming in every day. But on the other side of the fence, I really need to get so far away from this shit. Like, it's kind of this weird thing. And I think we found the balance. Like, I was away and like, I wasn't talking basketball, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't hitting them talking. Like, we just hitting each other, chopping it up. They hitting me like, yo, what's up? What's, man, What? how you doing? We miss you, bro. Like, what's going on? And I'm talking to them, and we just talking. Like, you know, for what I am to this team, I'm the one in the group chat if I ain't playing. Like, yo, see this at halftime. Like, I'm not doing none of that. I'm just away from it. Like, a couple games, I'll be honest. Like, a couple, some, I ain't even watch. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not in it. I'm, I'm, I'm out of this. I'm not in it. And, but the relationship with them grew stronger. Like Steph, Steph called me or text me every day. Every day I was away. Yo, what's up? Just checking in. Yo, if one day he missed, uh, yo, next day, uh, uh, yo, what's up? Like, where, where you at? What you doing? Like, every day. And so the relationships grew. Steve, checking in. Mike Dunleavy, calling me four or five times a week. Like, yo, what's up? Just checking in. Not like, yo, how you doing? You working out? You... None of that. Like, yo, what's up? What's going on with you? How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Like, cool. You watch the seven p.m. in Brooklyn. That shit is fire. <laughs> That's all it was. You get good, boy. You get good, boy. You get good. You get good. That's all. That was you that. get good, boy. Well, like speaking a little bit more about that. Like now, you know, we all know, man. Father Time is undefeated. Yeah, I've been with this group as a Yankee fan. It reminds me of like the, I'm a Yankee the core fan four, too, bro. the core four. Yeah. You know what I mean? And watching those Dude, guys go through crazy. it and win. Now you the Yankee fan today? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I always, always. You are, you're a Knicks on, fan. You, you know, this come man. on. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 you dancing, you dancing, you dancing. <laughs> You dancing. You got me like that last week. <laughs> you dancing. You da- you dancing. I didn't even have to go to therapy last week. Cause like, I got I got an invoice from Bello last week. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like the, like you said, like or like I was saying, you know what I mean? Like y'all look, y'all have been a unit, a group. Like you said, like y'all love playing together. That team chemistry is like envy, bro, around the league. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like a lot of teams look at y'all as like, yo, this is the blueprint, bro. Mm-hmm. Like this is all homegrown. You know what I'm saying? Like so. With, you know what I mean, the passage of time, Clay getting older, moving into a different role, you know what I mean, Steph moving into a different role, people talking about Steph possibly leave, ah, all this other crazy shit. How do you, how do y'all stay, like, solid as a group, you know what I mean? Like, what is this, like, bowling, y'all, you know what I mean, playing Call of Duty together, like, a lot of wine, a lot of wine, a lot of wine, a lot of wine, <laughs> that Vino, you know what I mean? And Coronas for Steph, <laughs> I mean, for Clay, for Clay, for <laughs> With fucking Modelo. <laughs> yeah, word. Like, <laughs> an ice cold Modelo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, we, we kind of got a perfect balance of like, we give each other space. Like, right. Like, I'm not going on Clay's boat every day with him. First time I actually went on Clay's <laughs> boat, <laughs> <laughs> the, this thing happened with Rudy Gobert. I got this video. Thing happened with Rudy Gobert. And I went to LA. I went, it's my safe space, man. I go home and I went to LA and I was coming back and I flew into Oakland. The Bay Bridge was shut down. There was a protest on the Bay Bridge and it was about the Gaza stuff and all that. So they was laying on the bridge and uh, you couldn't get across the bridge. So I couldn't get to the gym. Clay came on his boat across the water <laughs> to pick me up in Jack London Square, Oakland. Where I tried to get like Eric House and tried to get the cops to like escort me through. Like nothing could work. You could not get across. 
So he came across the boat, him and E. Housen came and picked me up. And this was right after I had got at Rudy Gobert. So it was perfect time. And like, he needed the water. I, I just, <laughs> he needed I, that boat ride. Yeah, I need to get there. But I just got five games for you. Like, yeah. he came and scooped me. And that was my first time on this boat. Not that I wouldn't go on the boat. But point being, I got a family. Yeah. Like, Steph got a family. Yeah. Clay got his thing. Like, him and his brother are tight. Thick as these always together. Like, and we give each other that space. It ain't like, yo, you my teammate. Like, we yo, we need too. to go do this. We oh, you know we what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we, we don't. Like, me, Steph, and Clay, our interests of things that interest us, like, on a daily basis, is over here, over there, and over here. We have things in common, but like our everyday lives are not the same. Right. We don't do. We don't make the mistake of trying to force that. Right, yeah. which makes it work. You know, but when we together, we together, and we'll do stuff like we'll kick it together, and that's always fun. But like, man, we've been on tour together for twelve years. Oh shit! Yeah. Nah. And guess what? Yeah. We spend more time together, as you know. We spend more time together than anyone else in our lives. Mm hmm. We don't then need to go fake some, like fake some shit and like, while while we at home, like yo, I need to be at you. Like we we spend so much time together. Yeah. You go do your thing, I'm gonna go do my thing. You go do yours, and when we every time we come together, it's special. We sit together on the plane, like we sit in a space that no one else sits in. Other players sit in the front. We kind of sit at this table, and That's why it's them, us. That's why them young niggas don't like them. That's the old nigga. That's the old nigga back in the play. <laughs> they ain't even on Instagram. Old ass motherfucker. No, they probably be balling on the old nigga. Don't come back here, though. No, the young fellas do like they do look at us like we old as shit though. Like they one thousand percent look yeah, at I know us like that. Out. And it's cool, like we but like we respect each other's space, what we like. Like I'm not forcing what I like on you. You're not forcing right. what you like on me. I'm not judging you for what you like. You're not judging me for what I like. We all appreciate each other for who we are. Right. It's no pressure for me to be Steph Curry or fit into his thing. There's zero pressure to do that. There is zero pressure for Clay to fit in my thing. Zero. What we have, it's what we have, and it's special, man. It's a bond. Like, it can't be fucking broken. Like, it is so fucking special what we have. But we all live in our own spaces. It's, we do not try to make it like this whole team thing. Or like, we got to do everything. Like, no, fuck that. You live in your space. <laughs> right, I live in my right. space. Clay live in his space. And then we bring our shit, like, together where it needs to, but not, like, yeah. it's because it, and then it's too much, like, then I'm tired of you because now we together come even on, more. Yeah, we definitely like, gonna argue. Come on, bro. We gonna argue. It's it's rap. It's, yeah, man, it's musicians. Say, it's bands. I was about to say you That's put a in great a point though. Like he said, we've we been on tour, tour for twelve years, man. Yep. We've been on tour twelve. It's summers. like, bro, we haven't done it. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, what are we doing? Yo, listen, man. <laughs> man this tour it. date, this stop right here. Yo, y'all go over there, man. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. Who didn't blow fish? The nigga tried was like. Yo, Hootie, man. Come on, man. I want to like, see you over I'm there. Good, bro. Like, yo, you get what I'm saying? Be over here, blowfish, and be like, yeah, when the band need a break, like, yo, the band need a break. When the band need a break, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? Fact. Let's come back to it. But Clay, is, Clay is an ill motherfucker, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Clay is Clay, Clay is Clay is special, dude. Clay you know is. another thing that I think is great about us still that we have, we all say hi to each other every day, and that's not like. I don't know if people, when you're around someone that much, like a lot of people don't say hi. Yeah. Like we say hi and hey, embrace up, each doing? other yeah. every time. We, and like that's, I think that's a testament to our appreciation and love for each other. Yeah, yeah. Like I know people that I see that, that I don't say hi to. Her. Like we speak to each other. You give not. Like, you talking about the acknowledgement. Yes. Acknowledgement. You get a nod. You know what I'm saying? You come to the every back day. of the plane, you'll get a nod. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so, oh, shit. It's special, man. So listen, man. Like, you are a very outspoken, opinionated dude, man. You're also a hell of a recruiter. You know what I'm saying? We know what you did. Getting KD to the Warriors. You was talking about, this is hypothetical because you active. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get nobody in trouble. Okay, Adam, we love you. You know what I'm saying? We just bigged you up for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Steph and LeBron. 
That'd be crazy. On the team that you have right now. Like, what does that look as a basketball it, as a fan and it as like, happen. It can't happen? It won't happen. But no, no, I'm saying hypothetically, <laughs> if it we... were to happen, how does that play out? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like who's you know what I mean, like, because we know LeBron is like more like a magic than than a, than a mic. You know what I'm saying? So like, how does that work out, basketball wise, and then like locker room wise? Locker room wise, I think you have mature individuals that understand each other because we all have the same. We got families. We got like appreciation for where we are in our spaces. Uh, like minded individuals that would enjoy some great vino all the time. Like, <laughs> we would gamble. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have things in common. Um, how does it work? We're all secure in who we are. Like, I don't think anyone is like, ah, I need to. Like, no, nah, we all secure in exactly who we are. And so I think that works no problem. The basketball... I think that's the easiest part because you got a bunch of guys who know the game and ain't in competition with the next guy, like very at peace with where they are. And so the number one thing would be to win. You also have a group of guys that know how to win. And so I think in looking at it, I think that team wins a championship, no problem. Easy. Like easy. I don't think so. Crazy. I don't think it would change. I don't think so because guess what? If Braun go, I hate talk about this shit because it ain't never gonna fucking happen. <laughs> but listen, man, that's what they want to hear. That's what they want to hear. I'm gonna come down to the fan. Come on, you know what somebody said on the couch? Let me hear what Melo got to say about this though. Here we go. <laughs> if Braun is going to go to state, you got to build another team. He out of there. Clay is gone. Them niggas ain't big. They can't stay. You think they got to move? Niggas is gone. It's gonna be them two and Kaminga and Steve Kaminga Kirk. can't go nowhere. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Kaminga can't go nowhere. Kaminga can't go nowhere. You get what I'm saying? Kaminga a star. So as a fan, y'all gotta chill out, man. This shit ain't happening. You said to say y'all said the same thing about Steph coming to New York. Stop that shit. Yo, listen, because it was right there. In the that's draft. more. That's more. Yeah, you know, y'all fuck that off though. Yeah, listen, can't I, never get it back. Listen, if, I, if it would have been See up what to I'm me, saying? can't never get it back. That's if it would have been I'm up saying. to me. So shit. hypothetically speaking, <laughs> no, I think it'd be dope. <laughs> It'd be dope, but I do agree with Mel. There, it ain't happening, and you know the deadline was cool. Just to have a couple conversations about it, like to entertain the thought of that, like it was cool to have a conversation about it. That's a fact. Because it's one of those things that you never thought the conversation, like you never fathom that the conversation would ever even happen. Right. So to. <laughs> To even like the, the thing to come up, I'm like, yo, this is fucking like, where am I living in the I'm intrigued by the conversation, but nah. like the dialogue going back and forth behind the scenes on like, yo, like, how did that go down? That's what I want to find out. I feel like I was living in the twilight. Like, wait, what are we talking about? Right. Those conversations is a lot the different. The conversations was fun. You got to have so, big kahunas you to see? pick that phone up. <laughs> say, either way, though. Right. Yo, look, yo, yo, bro, uh, for Steph. Either way, you, you gotta have some. Bro, when you call it for the white boy, hat. Boy, for the white hat. You know what I'm saying? It's a different kind of thing. It's white hat, white hat. Yeah. Like, man, so listen, like I said, you was instrumental, you know what I'm saying, in bringing KD to Golden State, obviously. Was this somebody else that you had in mind? Was Because, you know what I mean? Like, everybody got the, we gonna get this guy. If we don't get this guy, I wanna get this guy. If I don't get this guy, I wanna get this guy. Like, who? Who was like the the one, two, three for, for Dre when that was going down? With KD? Yeah. There was no two, three or four. That was it. It was, that was it. KD or bust. When I signed my on deal, when I signed <laughs> 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 When I signed my deal, BJ Armstrong was my agent. Uh when I signed my first big deal. Shout out to BJ, man. Shout out to BJ Armstrong, god damn it. And the conversation me and BJ had was listen, here's y'all cap. Here's your whole cap table. Here's what it is next year. The cap next year jumps to this. Look who's a free agent next year. KD. 
I know he want to get out of OKC. I'm like, I know too. It's like the worst kept secret. Like, yeah. he's like, I know this. And I know y'all will be adventurous. And I'm like, bet. So here's what you can take and y'all still be able to pay him max. And and the number was five for 85. And he handed me a blank sheet of paper. He's like, all right, write down the number that you want and I'm gonna go get it. For some dumbass reason, I was like, all right, 82, because I didn't quite understand that even if they gave me that $3 million, didn't give it to me, they couldn't take it and give it to somebody. Right. I didn't know that at that right. time. So I was like, 82, so we can sign one more, Lord. Dummy, I should have took you three, three M's. I said but 88. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote 82. 85, 84. <laughs> I wrote 82 on a sheet of paper. He's like, all right, circle it. But if you circle it, you saying it's done? We were at the montage in Beverly Hills, which is now the Mayborn. But if you circle it, you're done. Done deal. That's it. I circled it. He took the sheet of paper and left. So that was it. That was the conversation a whole summer before KD becoming a free agent. This is summer 2015, right after we won our first championship. So then 2016 happened. We win 73 games, and I'm like, oh, shit. But then we lose, and I'm like, okay, it's in play. And that was it for me. I was no, like. If I ain't make it to the NBA, I ain't know what else I was gonna be. Ain't no number, ain't no backup option. Right, like, right. Yeah. You gotta go back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Nah, man. Was he was going back out of here. Man. Come on, man. You crazy? To t- straight up, bro. Block. Uh, uh, five yard uh, flat. I, nah, Ten I yards trash. after the catch. <laughs> I was trash. <laughs> like, that yeah, was bad it. Hands were... <laughs> I got I had good hands, but I was trash. I couldn't get off the line. <laughs> By the way, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Let's go no, back. The to Michigan KD. State, there, but the highlights is deceiving. They ain't telling the whole story. By the way, I ain't, that, that, they ain't no, that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> we've been serious right now. We, we, we've been serious. <laughs> but that was it. It was KD. Like it wasn't no. I don't even know who else was a free agent that year. You ain't even check. No. Nah. We we was going to get KD because you also with what we have, everybody don't fit that. Yeah. So it wasn't like you was looking at a bunch of people like, oh, I'm going to get, like we knew we, we needed to get KD. It made total sense and it could happen. And that was the goal. So was you the anchor that, that made everybody feel comfortable? Like around you, like your teammates, your, 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 your situation that y'all have going on has already been established. This is our style. This is how we play. We only bring people here that know how to, that, that's going to fit into these, these, we gonna plug and play, right? We don't need nobody else. We don't need another mm-hmm. white hat, mm-hmm. right? But now the the winning bug come in, right? It's like you win these seventy three games, you you lose. You're like, oh shit, ah, that can. But we don't need it. Mm-hmm. But that can It'll help. I can help. We don't need it. It mm-hmm. will hurt. But I can help. Mm-hmm. Was you the anchor? Because you had to make. I assume that you would have to make Steph feel comfortable, Clay feel comfortable, Steve Kerr feel comfortable. You had to feel comfortable, right? But in your mind, you already played it out. Mm-hmm. You already had a whole year, a year ahead of time to see what this looked like, mm-hmm. right? What was that conversation like? I think um, I was definitely the one trying to connect the dots. Yeah. But I can only anchor as far as Steph Curry allows me to. Absolutely. Like, at the end of the day, I can take something to third base, but it can only get the home plate if Steph says so. Like, and I would never cross that. Like, again, in talking about how this thing works, I'm never crossing that. Like, at the end of the day, I, it is my role to take stuff from first to third. Yeah. Like, he shouldn't have to take stuff from first to third. Like, and Clay, 
Clay ain't dealing with none of that shit. Like that ain't that. Clay, Clay. on the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clay ain't dealing. <laughs> Clay on the lava ain't over there. He's got lava over there. Clay almost like, listen, I'm, I'm playing yeah. basketball. Y'all let me know when it's time to go do that thing. Y'all deal with all that shit. Right, right. Like Clay ain't dealing with none of that. So He's locking when it's time to work. Yeah, like yeah, he yeah. ain't like all that other stuff. Tell me when I need to show up yeah, and right. play. Like uh, Clay ain't dealing with none of that <laughs> yeah. shit. Steph. So it's my role to take, like, he shouldn't be in the weeds. Like, right. it ain't his job to take it from first to third. I'm taking it from first to third every time. But, like, he got to close it. Like, and he got to stamp it, and he got to say, all right, I agree. It's almost like I write up this whole plan if you can visualize it. And then I go hand it to him, like, all right, I've done this, 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 and this. If we want to finish this, here's what you should do. Right. Or here's what you could do. It's totally your total decision of if you want to do this or not. But I've done this leg work. Now, if you want to do this, now you just go do that. You want to be Mariano and close it? Close it. Close it. If not, it? keep on third. <laughs> yeah. and, and we're done with it. And <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> moving <laughs> on. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck the groundwork I played. You yeah. ain't want to do it? Great. We go I this cool. way. No and problem. no hard feelings. And so oh, yeah. that's kind of what it was there. It's like, I'm kind of the peace connecting all the dots. I'm the relationship, like, I'm bridging the relationship between Steve and KD in a sense. I'm, like, the one taking a step back and kind of making all this work. But again, that only goes as far as Steph allowed me to take it. And, and you still have to do what you do on the court. 100%. Right. Like, that's, a big, that's, a big, that's a big kind of, like, position to be in yeah. mm -hmm. as a player. Knowing that I have, like this is, this is ours. You know what I mean? Like this, this the, that's the white hat, but this is ours. Yeah, our thing. We gotta. So I, because I know how to, uh, uh, I can have conversations. Mm -hmm. I can put these pieces in play to get, to get you to the third. Yeah, you just gotta come through and dap the nigga up. Yeah, right. yeah. All right, so wait, my, we locking right. it. So now, now it's up to you. To, now it's up to you to close that. That's yeah. a tough position to be in because that's a fine line to play. Because a lot of times, an insecure person with the white hat would be like, "Yo, you doing too much." Mm -hmm. Right. That's yo. Fact. They right. won't even let you get it to third. That's right. a fact. So as soon as oh, you, you talk to homie, oh, I ain't. You as soon as you me. feel like you about to get on base, like nah, nah, yo, chill, yeah, chill. That's like, a what, fact. What, like that's that. Right, so for him to have that rapport with the white hat like that, that's major because that situation is a, is a tough situation. And I still gotta be, like if it don't happen, I still gotta go compete against that. Yeah. How, yeah. My, how my comrades gonna be looking at me? Right. They side, you know, are they gonna be side eyed? Are they going, I still gotta mm -hmm. compete against that if it don't happen. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's a lot of pressure that yeah, yeah. they put on that. So if that doesn't happen, He got to work extra, extra, extra hard the next time, right. mm -hmm. and they, the ne and they might not be no next time. That's a fact. Because yeah. KDs come it's once in a, oh, a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, nah. that's the part of the game people don't really like dive into. They want to talk about the relationships. They want to talk about what happened. They, fuck that part of it. Let's let's get to the, the mental part of what this man had got to got to deal with and still stand on what he stand on and still take the darts that he take rightfully so or wrong or not. Like, it is what it is. Right. So does that help? I mean, obviously, I mean, yeah, I feel like it's a rhetorical question. Does it help having a teammate like Steph who isn't the ego guy to be like, yo, Dre, what the fuck you doing over there, man? Who the fuck you calling this guy? Da -da 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 -da. And you just being like, yo, listen, man, there's an opportunity here, <laughs> Steph, well, yeah, well, if you're interested. <laughs> you know what I mean? And him just engaging. It 100% helps because, again, I'm never going to disrespect Steph. So if he not cool with it, no, you ain't cool I'm, with it. I'm not cool with it. Like I can't. I'm not doing it. Like right. I'm not going to cross him. Like I'm just not doing that. I'm not. Number one, out of my respect and love for him, like that's first and foremost. But I'm also not a fucking idiot either. Like so, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh. I'm only doing it, I'm only going to do something with his approval. Now, and I'll float the idea. And like, I know his reaction. If I float the idea, and he like, huh, oh, talk to me about that. 
cool, we got some, we got some action. If I float an idea and he just keep it bon like I'm never, I'm not going back to that because he, he hurt me. <laughs> he was right, right. very sharp dude. He yeah, hurt he me. Like, that shit. He, he know that. I'm gonna go this way. Now. Right, right. But it it is also a testament. It's a testament to Steph and his character, but also his secureness in him. Like Steph, Steph knows exactly who he is. There's no question on who he is. What he do, why he do it, how he do it. He knows exactly who he is. And he always knows the right thing to do. Like, so sometimes I get in my own head or my own way and I'm like, I'm fucking doing this and I'm doing it this way. And like, I want to go about it one way. What I've learned over these last couple of years is bounce it off him. He's going to tell me the right thing to do. And whatever it is. He knows the right thing to do in everything. And he'll be like, ah, I think you should do this this way. And if you do it this way, and I'll do it. And I'm like, yo, you was right. Like 100% yeah. right. Like, and so. I should have bought in Ladera Heights. You was right. <laughs> <laughs> so I trust him, number one. But like, he always know the right thing. And, and. Just him being so secure in who he is, like, he's not, like, like to Melo's point, a lot of people in Steph's position would be phased by a Kevin Durant coming. Right. He like, oh, yeah, come on, man. Like, cool. Let's do it. Because he know exactly who he is. Most people actually are the opposite. Most people don't have a fucking clue of who they are. That's a fact. And so. Most white hats. Works. We yeah. talk about white hats a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most white hats. Lack self-awareness? Couldn't be able to fuck with this. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. Like, most guys that's in those positions of carrying that, that white hat couldn't, couldn't handle this type of personality. Like, it's, 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 it would be too much for somebody who's insecure. Like, mm -hmm. And most guys are insecure in those positions. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is why a lot of times you see they throw the rock and hide the hand, right? Or they make plays and they do it different ways. Or you know what I mean? They, mm -hmm. they, that's just how it goes. Because most people don't know what it means to, to be, live at that level, mm -hmm. right? So once you get to that level, you're gonna do it the, the way that you think you know how to do it at that level, right? And whatever I say goes, if you insecure. Like insecure white hat is saying whatever I say goes. I'm that dude. Right. Mm -hmm. Yo, you that's too much. Yeah. Right? So it goes from that's too much to now we bickering to now to the coach to now front office. Uh. Right? Mm -hmm. But now that all that's happening, the white hat is going around straight to the front office. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yo, listen, man. So my point is. White hats, I'm, I'm saying it because that's making, that's what makes Steph who he is mm -hmm. as a human being, as a man, as a person. Because for him to accept that, accept that, yo, Dre, you do what you do. Like, fuck that. I'm going to support you, like, no matter what. Right. I'm going to tell you when you wilding, but yep. I'm going to support you no matter what. Fuck that. Like, we need that. Most guys would have been like, man, get Dre out of here, man. Get Dre, get Dre out of here. Ooh, that's right. crazy. And that's a, that's I mean, a you fact. Know, you know the cliche, like, it's it's the guy that you hate to have on the other team, but you love to have on your team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As it's soon that. as you get that guy, you be like, oh, shit. Fuck up, door. Yo, get this guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey swap. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing too much. After the KD, you know what I'm saying, the, the era, the, the chip, you know what I mean? What's your relationship with KD like now? Um, I respect. KD as a basketball player, uh, he's one of the best we've ever seen. And that's kind of where it's at. Like, I got, I got no ill will. Um, I actually got nothing but love for KD, right. actually. But like, love is love. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. My love, like if I got love for you, my love just don't fade. Like, right. my shit ain't going tomorrow. Like, 
No, wishy washy. You know, no, like yeah. if I got love for you, I got love for you. And I got love for Kay. Like that ain't going that ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna always be that. Like, that's just how I am. You know what I'm saying? Like once I got love for you, bro, like, you gotta do some crazy <laughs> fucked up shit for me to not have love for you right. no more. And like, although I think he did some wild shit recently, like you go on TV talking about, bro, you got my phone number. You go on TV talking about, yo, you need, I hope he gets the help. Like, you hit me. You know what I'm saying? You hit me like, yo, I'm here for you. You need anything. Like, I'm here for you. Like, bro, if that's how you feel, hit me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was like, I thought that was wild. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. But I got nothing but love for KD always. You know what I'm saying? And, that's that. Like, we don't need to so, talk every day yeah, or so nothing to that like point, that. But to that point, life. I got to ask the question because mm -hmm. I got to be who I am mm -hmm. in the situation. You still got love for the nigga. You still love the nigga. Mm -hmm. Is it room for conversation? Always. Is it room for, yo? Let's let's have this. Let's 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 have this power. Me and you. Always room for that. You okay. know what I'm saying? But like. It that takes be two both people sides. to want to do that. Yeah, it's two, it's you know two can play the game, like, absolutely. Hey, that, that, that takes two people to want to do that. Hey, you like, know, two, we know you know, motherfucker. Two of us was in the room, my nigga. No, I'm just saying, I'm just now because, yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm going to keep it a bay. I'm going to keep yeah, it a fuck. Yeah. I fuck with both of them. You right. get what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. if it's anything that I could do. Piece it up. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a conversation. Like, if it ain't nothing that you ain't hurt me, you ain't hurt my family, you ain't, you said some foul shit. Like, you know, you, you said what you felt at the time because of you, that was just situation. You, that's your teammate. That's a, so that's the energy that you're around after that situation, right? And you're competing against that, right? So it could have been a shot or not, right? The situation was too sensitive. Mm. That's all it is. Yeah. It was the principle behind it of it being too sensitive at the time exactly. for you to jump out there. You were saying something that he already was going down that path. He said to himself, I got to go get the, gotta get the help, right? You just adding fuel to the fire on mm -hmm. the, the, what people is already saying. Right. This niggas bugged out, this niggas crazy, this niggas M, he's 730, ah, ah, like, and then you come out after that situation and say he need help. Right, he take it as a shot, nigga. You that you you still shoot, you shooting. Right, Fuck I'm over that. here working on me. Fuck that. You 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 don't you don't shoot a, a dog when it's down. Like you don't kick a dog when it's down. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I understand his perspective on it. I understand KD's perspective. I don't think he was ill will towards what he said, but he said it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So my job is not even my job as somebody who's Close to both of them. Is it room for conversation? If it is, let's have a conversation. Right. Nigga, we men. Yeah. We ain't gotta speak after this. We ain't, let's have a conversation. And let me say what I got to say. No judgment. You say what you got to say. Let's go. Let's go back. I go back over here to the boardroom. Go back over here to, <laughs> yeah, to the yeah. Draymond Green show. Like, it's, you right, know what right. I mean? but, like, but speaking of that, to that point, like as a, as a TV guy, like coming from where I come from, entertainment, blah, 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 do you think that part of that was like, Yo, this is just for like entertainment. It was the heat in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was the heat. It was the heat yeah. of the moment. That's all. That's all it was. It's it's the heat of the moment. The shit happened quick. Ah, right, it's, it's rift between both teams. It's rift between players. It's mm -hmm. a lot of energy boiling up in that situation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And he already got strikes against him. He already, you know what I mean? Had some stacks against him up until that point. So now he do this. It's like, oh shit, man. This nigga need help. Mm -hmm. like, and it probably came off like that. <laughs> like, oh, man, it's, like, ah, this nigga. I'm again. sure that's how it was. That's like niggas in the locker room <laughs> on the bus. Yo, yo, man, this fucking yeah. nigga drink all this crazy. Yeah, man, so I need help. Like, yeah. Right? So you carry that energy to the, the interview. Mm. Right? That's the energy you just come from. Yeah. So it ain't about what you said. It's timing, it's, it's everything. The timing of it, it's a very sensitive time as an individual, as a man, and what he's going through, right? That's my only point. I preach peace, champ. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I preach, preach peace, peace, man. Peace, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I preach peace. If, on, if, man, if, we... if this was anybody else, 
we as as men, as black men, be like, yo, man, yo, them niggas should get that shit together. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So them niggas in the same it. situation. That's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. You know what I mean? That's he fact. ain't gonna he ain't gonna initiate the conversation. That's true. Because <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Yeah, nah, yeah, that's the thing too. So that's the you know part. what I'm saying? I gotta, you know, if it's I being, can be that. Yeah. Time for a convo, KD. Moderate that. You know what I'm saying? That's 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, be we here. You know what I mean? But listen, enough about all these old watch niggas, man. We talking about old 30 year old <laughs> ball players, man. We got to look ahead to the future, yes, right? Sir. You know what I'm saying? And you said something that a lot, I feel like a lot of fans is feeling, myself included, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like that the new young guy, you speaking on Edwards mm -hmm. and, and the All Star game and all that. And like, you know, younger guys being like, man, I ain't trying to really do this shit, man. Mm -hmm. I don't really, man, fuck a slam dunk contest, bro. I ain't really trying to. No disrespect to Mac McClung, bro, but like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> there yo, dog. Go. Like, <laughs> there you go. Is, this is the all star yeah. game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be all stars. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm from Saginaw. Jason Richardson won the dunk contest. He wasn't an all star. But like, Jason Richardson was a damn good player. He in the NBA. Yeah, he, like, his like, name rings out. Like, yeah. you gotta be in the NBA. Yeah, Jay Rich was a, uh, was a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, gotta be in the NBA. you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, now, hold up, NBA. NBA umbrella or Jason oh, Richardson? No, no, no. You said you got to be in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, heard you. I said umbrella, <laughs> NBA umbrella, or does everybody under the NBA umbrella make at least the NBA league minimum? No. All right then. Okay, touche, touche. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hold up, but I'm I gotta play devil's advocate. We trying to expand the league. We trying to make it. That's cool. So do you incorporate the young G League guys? In so then why are you still having the G League All-Star Game and dunk contest too? Okay, that's the conversation. Why not put it together? Why is it two different seasons? Have the G League why? versus... <laughs> because there, there's still a difference in between the G League and making it to the big league. And then you got making it to the big leagues and you got All-Star Weekend, which yeah. is a totally different Indeed. honor and thing. Like Even everybody in the NBA, as you know, don't make it to that. You know what I'm saying? And so that's a privilege. Yeah. And but that privilege is gone now. I think the privilege is gone of like the prestige. Not to cut you off, Dre, but the no, prestige of like getting the all-star nod. Like, like it's it's I don't know, champ. I don't no, know. Listen, Cause yo, when Brussel got no, that shit, he was hard. like, I'm saying it's hard to be an all-star. Mm -hmm. Like, we but we make it seem so easy, like, oh, oh, and we, you know, the young, even to the point where the young guys is now coming in, nigga, all right, man, do whatever, man. Like, I don't, I don't even want to play. Nigga, if, if my first year, nigga, when I came on oh, 2007 All-Star Game, with Kobe and AI and like that shit, Yao, Shaq, I think, no, Shaq was in Miami, but yeah, you know what I mean, Dirk and all of those guys, like, nigga, I couldn't, I couldn't say shit in the locker room, like, mm -hmm. And I'm three years in, like, yeah. before my first nod. I can't say, like, you gotta pay your respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you, nigga, you couldn't sit, I couldn't sit on the side. First All Star game, I, nigga, you, I couldn't sit over here with Cole and these niggas. <laughs> yeah, like, you, these niggas looking at you like, from. man, you ain't got enough stars <laughs> on your jacket, man. Like, you got one star you got on your jacket. I'm telling you, man, yeah. the minute that somebody make you feel like that, because you there, you made the All Star. But the minute that one of them niggas make you feel like, man, them stripes, them stripes, hey, you got one niggas got 15, you got eight, got, now it's, got not, now it's all, it's all mingled into one. It's like, nigga, if I got one or if 18, it's the same shit mm, to the true. person who got one. That is a fact. So I'm going to carry it. I'm, I'm going to carry it the way that I'm going to carry it because the one that got 12, 13, Whatever, he said it earlier in this conversation. They already looking at it like old niggas anyway. That's crazy. So they carrying it like, man, this what man. I'm here too now, like, mm -hmm. and I'm leading the league in scoring, or I'm, you know, what I mean, I'm, I'm averaging whatever I'm averaging. I'm hooping. I'm playing. I. Duh. It's a different feeling. I mean, again, I'm not in that them locker rooms no more. I just I'm going off of what I observe. Yeah. And the energy that I get, but also understanding the conversations and what I had to go through to be an all star. And every year, like, you felt like I still got to prove. Mm -hmm. Even when you a starter, even like, it's always somebody like, damn, man, like, I want to get the validation from that person. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you, 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 that makes you want to get there every year. It's going to get to the point now where it may, you just going to get an all-star nod. They're going to just announce the team and like, mm -hmm. it could go there. And it's getting weird now because I remember like, you talking about like the stars playing in the game. I remember Kobe, Jordan, them go talking, joined, going at it, whatever. And like just seeing that as an NBA fan, a young NBA fan, that's like, bro, this is like, this is like Marvel mm -hmm. and DC crossover. Bro, not to cut you off, that's, that, that, that's too far back. Go recently. Yeah. All-star game, Cole broke D-Wade nose. Boom. <clears throat> that switched something crazy in D-Wade. Like, hold the fuck up. Oh, I think D-Wade broke his nose. Like, yeah. But that's, that, that turned a switch in both of them at that point in time. It's like, oh, shit, this nigga broke my nose. And he's still coming back? Like, this nigga like in the All-Star game. It's like, like put this shit game. back together. Bye -bye. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no more of that passion no more. Like, it's no more. It's not prestige no more, right. which it should be. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it should be all about this moment. Like, the prestige of this, of, of this moment, these players, what they do, what they contribute to their team during that time. Stars are stars, man. Yeah, 100%. That, that, was kind of my, that was kind of my point to Anthony uh, when I was talking about Anthony Edwards, too, though. It's like, like, I got a lot of respect for and I think he... Like, I think he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he got the demeanor. He believe it. He speak it. He give life to other guys. Like, he giving life to guys that, come on, like, nobody could give them life. Like, he giving them, no, straight up. Yeah, like, nah, nah, you, you not lying, bro. No, nah, like, he giving this life. This fuck with this guy, because he no, said he, he's just, I know. Like, he's just he a straight shooter. Like, he's he giving exactly life to guys said. that. You wouldn't be cooking on another man, roster, bro. Uh, man, man. A year ago, everybody said Rudy Gobert was the worst trade in the world ever in the history of the NBA. Ever. That's a true fact. And Anthony Edwards has given this man life. Like he's he, a player of the year. He given he give life to guys. And so I think he it. When he said what he said about the All-Star game, I'm like, nah, young fella, that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? When you number one, you like, you have what it takes to be what, what everybody's about talking about the face of the NBA. You got what it takes. Yep. Why, why wouldn't you want to be next to those guys? Guess what? To Melo's point earlier, when you get your all-star jacket, man, it feel good to have a few more stars <laughs> and a, a defensive player of the year trophy and the young guy walk on with one star. You're like, yep, I remember when mine looked like that, young fella. Like, yep. And it's dope that yours look like that mm. because you're here. That's the culture. But yeah, I, I'm walking in and seeing these dudes with 11 stars. I'm like, God. Like, that's real. Larry's. Uh, <laughs> scoring title, all-star game, MVP icon. Like, why wouldn't you want those things? These, this is what, like, I remember, a little off topic, but kind of along the same lines. Olympics 2021. I called Jason Tatum. He like, yo, I'm, like, I'm on the fence. I'm a little tired. I said, JT. This, this, this all started and began about building Hall of Fame resumes. Like, that's what we all start. Like, don't lose sight of that because you're tired today. Yeah. Like, remember the long, like, we're trying to build Hall of Fame resume. You got potential to do that, but you ain't there yet, JT. One of the best situations that ever happened for me, USA Basketball. Yo. And he like, you know what? He, he called me back a day league. later, like, you're right. I'm playing. And he committed. The book, like, and like, Bro, this is what this is about. Like, so for Ant, man, we all thought Derrick Rose was going to be arguably the greatest point guard we've ever seen, Indeed. and then he get hurt. Shout you can't D, take man. these shits for granted, man. Yeah, like, man. because all of a sudden, like, I, I, mean, I, I got to my phone last night and Ant cut and went down. I got scared of shit when I saw that non-contact. You go down, like, come on, like. You can't take these things for granted, man. You got to, when you got the opportunity to write your name in that book, you better grab a fucking Sharpie. Yeah. But nobody's and having those write. conversations though, Dre. That's the issue. Yeah. Nobody is, nobody is like having, I told you we talking about the greatness gene a lot. And he got it. Ain't got the, mm -hmm. he has the greatness mm -hmm. gene. It's, it's going to go as far as he wants it to go. Right? 
the All Star Game. We talk about the like how prestigious it is to be in that All Star Game, mm-hmm. right? And it goes back to what this culture, this generation, feels about the game, the sport, where the sport is going, right? Like it was disrespectful. Shoot the left hand and the tray and. But don't do it. Don't do it. Like I ain't don't don't do the game. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, don't yeah. don't perform in it. You yeah. get what I'm saying? If, if that's what you're gonna do, but nobody is like, yo, I don't know if it happened. Yo, you bugging? Like yo, you 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 bugging? Oh my God. Adidas should have been like, yo, and you you are fucking bugging. Mm-hmm. Nigga, what the fuck you doing? Mm-hmm. So because of that, those conversations, and again, I don't know if these conversations are being had. Those I don't if it if it's not those conversations need to be had. Somebody should have, and yo, you bugging my nigga? Like what are you doing? Nigga, you shooting lefty and this is All Star Saturday night. Everybody already looking at this like get this shit out the window, like yeah. throw this shit away, pack it up, put it in the closet, don't bring it back out. Everybody looking at it like that. You have a chance to be the face of the NBA. To make a moment right here. No, 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 no. To be the face. Of the NBA, not this moment to be the face of the NBA, and you come out shooting the tray with the left, and it's businesses, it's corporations, it's money, like that's what I'm saying. I'm that's disappointed in Adidas. Yeah, no, no, no. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like that, how that, you don't like this is a big moment for y'all. Y'all got steam, y'all. Yeah, that part. So y'all that's got what I'm saying. steam like, on Star Weekend, like y'all using that as as in using that moment to elevate yourself to. to but the, you don't. To but the I can't. I can't. Listen, I go all, I, I, I'm, I'm about perspective. I can see it from here. I can see it from here. Right? I see it from where he's coming from. Yeah. I get it. Absolutely. Like, I fucking get everything he's thinking and what he's thinking and how he's going. I get it. It's my shit. It's, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. But listen, it's steps to greatness. And you got to be willing to put the work in to continue to reach that level of greatness. We talk about, you know, we, Brown, when I said, are you, are you committed? When we talk about Zion, I mean, are you committed to, for that long, that, that many years to be committed to you and your game and studying and body and are you committed for that longevity? It's the same thing with Ant in a sense. Are you committed to doing what you gotta do constantly to be the face of this league because they throwing that out there too loosely. Yes, they are. Face up faces of the league. Yeah. You got to earn a, to be the face of the league. Yeah. Like, it's a privilege to be the face of the NBA. I was, Only been a couple. Nigga, well, I was hot. I, 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 like, nigga, if I got a chance to be the face of the league, yo. Give me that. It's a different well, thing. It's a different, that's a different mindset. You don't just hand that. You don't just, these talking heads just, oh, he's the face of the league. Man, get the fuck out of here. It's exactly. two people that may be, have a chance to be the face of the league if they want it. And that's Jason Tatum, if he wants it, and Anthony Edwards, if he wants it. Those two. Ja was there. Yeah. And it, it, Ja's still young. He's still, you know what I mean? But right now, those two are the possibilities of that. So when people be throwing around the face of the league, that shit is, until these niggas get out, yeah. until them white hats get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a couple of Because they push. ain't got the white hat yet. Right? Mm-hmm, they don't. They too young to have the white hat. You ain't got enough experience. You ain't got enough. It ain't about the game. It's about everything else that come with it. You ain't there yet. Mm-hmm. You on your way. But these other motherfuckers with that white hat, until they gone, ain't no faces of the league. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So this, this batch that's about to start <laughs> navigating over here with us, until they gone, and it's about eight, you know, I ain't yeah. going to go down the list, but it's about... Well, eight to ten, that's Couple. on their way. Yeah. Rightfully so, though. We talk about father time. Like, yeah, yeah, nah, but they rightfully put the work so. in. And they got, like you know, I was saying, the stripes is there. When they when they pull up to the All-Star game, it's like five-star general, be like, I got mm-hmm. it. Man, I just went Everything. through the reason. I just, for me, I sat back and like, damn, man, it's like, I ain't really into All-Star Saturday night like that in the sense of like, it ain't as entertaining for me anymore, but I still support it. You get what I'm saying? I, I want to help. Yeah. Try to figure it out. But when you see shit like that, 
maybe it touched maybe it touched me part to the left a little bit different because <clears throat> now I'm on the outside of it. Now I know the conversations that's happening mm-hmm. top level. Right? Yeah. I know what's happening in those rooms and conversations of it's constant. That was a dagger. Yeah. And I want him to understand that. Yeah. That left hand shot was a dagger. That was a shot to the league. But nobody gonna tell you that. And I love you to death, and I love you to death. I'm gonna tell you that was a dagger. Just mm-hmm. learn from that. And let's move on. Go sell them kicks. Cause you you want you you on Fuego right now. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck it up, nigga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't fuck it up. People is already talking about yo, pack this whole night up, bro. Get this shit out of here. Let's just do like one thing and then do the all-star game. Why y'all dragging it? What would y'all do, or what would you do specifically since you're active right now? What would you change about the festivities, the way it goes down, to make it more, like, more of a draw? You know what I mean? Like how it used to be. Number one, um, for starters, you got to get back in these great cities. Like, I think, you know, and listen, I understand the business. I understand these teams bid on it um, to bring it to their city. But I think what it comes down to is ultimately, Adam, you have to make a decision, which is, do you want to take the bid that this team going to get? Or do you want to make this thing so great to where if we make it greater and we continue to grow it, the bid that the team going to give me it's minor. covers that, that, that money. Like, if, if we grow this, then that covers that tenfold. Like, so... We need to have this in great spots. And I think if you want to make it fair about, okay, this team getting the host and that team getting the host, there's ways to make it fair. You, people take over arenas all the time. And, like, there's ways to make it fair. But you got to get back in these great cities. All-Star Weekend used to be a, like a cultural draw as well. Like, everybody in their mom, like, the Super Bowl still is. Yeah. Everybody and their mama used to be at All-Star Weekend. Like, it was a cultural draw. My first All-Star, 2016, everybody was at All-Star. Like, the thing. But, like, no disrespect to the city of Indianapolis, but, like, don't nobody want to go to Indianapolis. It was 10 degrees. It was snowing. Yo, like, Mike Epps, man, what we doing, like, baby? Yo, come on, my G. Come <laughs> on, man. I mean, I'll fuck with Draymond I'll talk about, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Like, nobody want to go there. Yeah. And if you look at the cities that it... It was Indianapolis. The year before that was Salt Lake City. The year before that was Cleveland. Like, again, no disrespect to them cities. Cleveland, you know, my folks from there, I love, I, I love Cleveland now, which is weird to say. But, like, my folks from there. Yeah. But, like, when you're talking All-Star Weekend. Yeah. To quote Joe Kim Noah. Man, you want to be at <laughs> New York. You want to be in Toronto. Y'all really was a like, great Cleveland? One. <laughs> like Cleveland? Y'all, like, y'all want to go here yeah. on vacation? L.A.? <laughs> Miami? Miami. Do you think it should be one Scott's designated there? spot every I year? I think it should. Vegas. You think Vegas? I, Vegas, like, put it somewhere where people want to go, where it can still be a cultural draw. Puerto Rico. It's a real thing. Look at him. There he is. Crazy. Heritage. Puerto Lineage. Rico. Lineage. Yo, listen, Miami used to have pregame. I mean, post, I mean, fucking preseason games in Miami, man. Show me your tap. Uh, where where, pop, pop, there, there it is. Where, where? Yeah. Yo, Coco, man. Coco Tasso, man. <laughs> 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 What's up? Bahamas? Well, yeah. Hawaii? I like, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Take it like somewhere. the Pro Bowl. They do yeah, the Pro take Bowl. it somewhere. If Maui invitation, who could go to Maui? Come on. And if people you take go for this that. to a place yeah. where people will vac- vacation, like all of a sudden I'm bringing my fam. Number one, you're going to have more NBA players outside of the All-Stars that'll then go, which then allows you to do more activations with other NBA players that aren't necessarily in the All-Star game. Mm-hmm which then pulls all of that stuff off the All-Stars plate and allow them to focus on playing a basketball game. But right now, you can't focus on playing a basketball right. game. There's more sponsorships than ever, so you're being pulled in more directions than ever. On All-Star Sunday, you, you're taking pictures, you're doing this thing, yeah. you're doing that thing. You go warm up for 65 minutes, <laughs> and then like you're expected to go play a game. Nobody's physios are there. Like getting their bodies ready to play. When I get ready for a game, you know what time I start getting ready for a game? You know what? We play the Knicks tomorrow. You know what time I'm going to start getting ready for the game? As soon as he leave here. 
Like, <laughs> it's a whole day process, yeah, so man. Like yeah. to get my body ready to go at 7 p.m., I gotta do something today. I can't take today fully off. Yeah. Like, so I gotta go do core. I gotta go ride the bike and get my bluff. Like to get ready for tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You do all of these things, and then you show up at the ring to do all of these things, and then like, oh, you should go expend this amount of energy. Now, I think all stars need to take this serious. I think you need to I understand and appreciate the privilege, but like, let's also put them in a position yes. to be able yes. to give what you give. Like, we know what we know about the body now. Yeah. Easy to say, like, oh, in 1997, they didn't, but like in 1997, they didn't even really lift weights. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, like, <laughs> I'm not like, people was smoking bunkers in the locker room. <laughs> like, they didn't really lift <laughs> weights. Splits and center blocks. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, I, I do, cigarettes to, on the to that point, like, it, I, I believe that it should be a destination, like the same destination every year. What I believe, and I, again, the conversations are happening. This is going over the water. You want to do it right, go to Abu Dhabi. Take it international. Go to Qatar. Go to Saudi. Like, you know what I mean? They, like, that's where you're going at because that's where sports is going at. Mm -hmm. They controlling the whole landscape of every, they, of, they trying to, mm -hmm. of every sport. They countering leagues. PGA live. Crazy. Like, mm -hmm. it's nothing for them to create another, buy these leagues and do all of that shit. But now it's like our money gonna speak for ourselves. And we showing you the infrastructure. We showing you that we about business. Yeah. Like we showing you we got shit on secure because we got you know, proof of concept. Fights is over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Events mm -hmm. is over there. World Cups is over there. Mm -hmm. That shit work. Formula One shit. Right. So now that's gonna be the, when you talk about the, the cities bidding for these, these All-Star games, that's when it's gonna start hurting right, the right. cities. When they start dangling them, them, them numbers that you can't refuse. Yeah. That's what shit get interesting. Yeah. Now you gonna see motherfuckers like, yeah, I'm playing an all-star game. We doing all that, we doing all the activities. You got to, and they ain't playing that shit. You get what I'm saying? I agree with that. But what we also have to be careful about as athletes, um, as all stars, is you also can't make everything about money. Because, and, and that's the that's what's happening. Yeah, and and like that's what's like, happening. I thought it was I like, listen, man, the in season tournament was great, and like we all talked about like winning the five hundred thousand dollars. My, my, my pardon, you saying as an as an athlete? I'm saying as an athlete. We as we, athletes, we can't copy, allow yes. it to just be like, oh well, if they pay you a million dollars, then you, I'm going to play hard. like, like. We, we also can't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you still got to be about the business. Yeah. And understand, like, okay, so get rid of All-Star Weekend. Like, say, you know, get rid of All-Star Weekend, no game, you just announce All-Stars as an award. That's a lot of money off the book. Woo. A lot. Be all right. You know, so understand the business of basketball. And I feel like, you know, when, like, yeah, if you pay them a million dollars, then they play harder. Like, hey, here's a million dollars, go play hard. Like, come on, man. Like, nah. we get paid great, a great sum of money. Like, live incredible lives and all that's great, make money. But like, let's not say we need to dangle a million dollars for each player for guys to play hard. Like, is that it? I made a I made, I made the all-star game and you gotta pay me. Right? Mm -hmm. You gotta pay me, like. I made the All Star Game. Like you voted me in, and you, and you got to pay me. And if you want me, you got to pay me just to participate, just to pull up. And if you want me to play hard, you got to throw me an extra bag. That's where the the the, the shit get fucked up. That's crazy. because the conversation shifts, and the body language shifts, and the energy shifts. So where's though? I don't. I, this this is. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because. I ain't getting paid for this shit, man. They wanted me to do it. Adidas probably wanted me to do it, but more. Yeah. Like, it's it's a big brand moment for all the brands. So 
man, they ain't paying me that much money. Like when you look at it like that, right, right, now, right. I'm not just saying, I'm not just pointing him out, but that's the that's probably the mindset. It's like, oh, that is a mindset. You ain't, I ain't doing nothing. You ain't, we need more money. Yeah. And then you get people talking about that and projecting and oh yeah, they should get paid. <laughs> yes, we deserve what we deserve. Yes. But it comes a point in time where it's certain shit that, 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 that we have to be validated by and that's All-Star Weekend. To be an all-star, you that 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 validation puts you on the radar for one, your first one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Then it's like mm-hmm. what you do after that. Mm-hmm. Are you consistent enough to make two, three, four, five, six, maybe one off or come back? Like, are you consistent enough? So don't just get complacent with the one star and just I could do whatever. Exactly. You feel me? And 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 I'm gonna tell you another thing when I when I look at it, where it gets so as an all-star, the privilege is there, right? And everybody start comparing, like, look what happened when it was $500,000 in the in-season tournament. Let's not get this twisted. All-star is the thing. Yeah, that's like, the moment. All-star is what it is. That's the moment. It's, it's the moment. It's already a moment. The in-season tournament, the five hundred grand, is a bonus because this tournament. But the 500 grand wasn't necessarily for people to play hard. Right. Understand what's going on here, right. guys. That's, you know, You're building IP. The NBA's building IP here. Intellectual property. So the in-season tournament becomes something that now you can sell. You start talking TV right? the TV deal. This is a totally different, separate part of the season. This is IP. Different jerseys, courts, all that shit. It's yeah, monetizable shit. Exactly. So don't fall into the trap of like, oh, they paid us 500 grand to play hard in these. No, the fuck they did it. No, they did it. It's its its own separate thing. So it's its own pie. Okay, so you got a bonus for winning this thing. But this wasn't really 500 grand to get you to play hard. Right. We're building IP. Right. So don't miss the business and right. like what we're doing now if, like with the all-star like this is bad for business right. like and so stop comparing the 500 grand like what if they make this a million it ain't gonna be no different like no yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so i love that you said that man because i'm i'm all about that in media in general but like make do you think that players would go for some type of deal some type of agreement where Y'all have equity in this new IP, you know what I mean? But then it, then it becomes mandatory. So it's just like, yo, the Ant Edwards of the, of the world, the Jason Tatums of the world, yo, you have equity in this, you're going to grow with this IP, but you got to participate. I am no, all bro. for equity. Hell no. I, I'm all for <laughs> equity. Hell um, I, I, like, I fucking, that's the goal. Like, that's what we're all striving for. You know how fucking hard it is to get equity in something that's already built? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, All-Star Weekend been going for years. 30 years. Yeah. Ain't, you ain't get no equity in All-Star Weekend. It's built long before you. And why? Like, like yeah. why do I have to why do I have to have equity in this to play? Like this is again, we talk, we we taking out how prestige this moment is. Exactly. We taking out this the specialness of being an all-star. I'm saying though, as yeah. a motivator. To get the younger guys. Why do you, you need to be, be motivated. motivated that way? You are a fucking all-star in the NBA. You watch all the greats. Again, when we were coming up, watching these guys in all-stars and then going back even before them to Mike. Like that, like Shaq, like I can name you five of Shaq's all-star weekend suits. <laughs> Yo, I mean, me too. Sitting on That's the sideline. Like, what men I remember age, my first right? All-Star, like I had on a bright ass <laughs> yellow leather jacket on an All-Star Saturday. Nigga, I remember Shaq all that had, shit. Shaq had the big dumb phone with the With the, the fucking with the phone. Come on, man. <laughs> this was AG with the flip phone, but you know what I'm saying? Mellow, man, we've been fortunate enough, man, to travel the world in our careers, you know what I mean? See, see the sights, you know what I mean? See the world. Uh, you know, even though East Tremont will forever be my home and my favorite destination, Respect. nothing's better than seeing new places, you know what I'm saying? That's why Viator has been essential in making that easier than ever. Viator is a website and app where you can book travel experiences like Brooklyn to Be More or wherever you like to call home. You know what I mean? With over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries, I didn't even know there was that many. 
There's something for everyone. Plus, Viator's travel experiences have millions of real traveler reviews, so you got the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. You know what I mean? Do what you want to do. Don't go zipline if you don't want to zipline. So download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences. You will remember. Remember that. Do more with Viator. Each and every week here on Seven Pier mm -hmm. Brooklyn and the number one series period on, <laughs> on the internet, you know what I'm saying? Closely followed by the Draymond Green show, you know, you know the vibes. <laughs> every day we every time we end on it, we're to fuck with it or fuck out of here. Well, we present yes, you sir. with a pop culture item, question, mm -hmm. whatever. You tell us if you're fucking with it or if it's a man, get this shit the fuck out of here. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> first off, uh, on the docket, uh -uh. I know y'all seen this, man. This this was super viral. Cam Newton. Was at a 7v7 tournament, I mean, in Atlanta, and uh, he got jumped by what I thought was like junior high school kids, but these was grown ass men. Grown men. It's just the Cam Newton is Cam Newton. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, fuck it with it or fuck out of here. Well, let's watch the video first before I ask you the question. Because, oh. Number one, Cam Newton is a huge human being. He's a big Jesus mother. Yo, he is big as shit. And these is grown ass men, and he's tossing around he's like crash dummies. Down. Moving them dudes. Like, oh like, fuck, like he's like a bounce like, at the strip club, bro. Like, like it's coming out. Yo, big man. <laughs> big man. Yeah. The Hulk is coming out. Yo, what? That's <laughs> crazy. Oh, what? Nah, that that's that's some that's crazy though, bro. That's insane. Nobody nobody's safe, chat. No, nah. Nah, nah, I don't even know, know, know what the fuck happened, but nobody So they always talk about Cam's <laughs> headwear. Like Cam Mello's another notorious hat, you know what I'm saying? Aficionado. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cam is known for his hats. The fucking with the fuck out of here question is, wearing a hat to a fist fight like Cam, would you rock a Cam type fedora and engage in fisticuffs? I'm not rocking a Cam type of fedora. And without fisticuffs? Without fisticuffs. In any situation? Fuck out of here, Cam. And I'm rocking with how Cam held it down up there. But fuck out of here, man. We got to he like the Wicked Witch of the East. Yeah. Goddamn hat, man. Yeah, the Cam, locks coming Cam up the hat game is impeccable, though. He got, got the, the whole up his. The, the feather all that. I'm, I'm fuck out of here, Cam. Fuck out of yeah, here. Fuck Cam, out yeah, no, but fuck I, out that, 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 was, that was a fucked up situation. I don't even know yeah, what happened, crazy. but that was a fucked up situation. But I, again, it all ties back to a, the conversation of young, old generation, respect, mm -hmm. lack of respect. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Cam is a shit talking nigga, though. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He probably said some crazy shit to them little niggas out there. <laughs> but then you gotta understand. But it's Cam Newton. He should be able to exactly. Football, right? So that. So that. So my point is, that's the the lack of respect yes. is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's it's, fact. It's a lack of respect because if you know Cam, you know Cam is a shit talking motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like he pops shit. He got to. That's he got to. Mm -hmm. Black quarterback playing. He was Superman. Yep. You get what I'm saying. So the lack of respect that whoever that was. Have for somebody like Cam. Yo. I hope it was. I hope it wasn't like no hating shit or, or, or like Cam probably said some foul shit and, and niggas probably was like, man, you know what? I'm sick of this nigga, man. Fuck this. Fuck out of here. I'm fine for that, but I'm going for mine. I don't give a fuck. Fuck out of here. So I'm, 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 I'm fuck out. I'm fuck out of here. For respect. I'm fuck out of here with the hat, and I'm fuck out of here at the scuffle too. Like mm -hmm. the shit could have went bad. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah, shit could have went bad, man. Right. Cause that shit was in Atlanta, you know. You, you, motherfuckers, uh -huh, you go down south, on. man. There's so, a whole less restrictions on firearms. All right. <laughs> As professional athletes, we love our own sport like no other. But Francis Tiafo recently had this to say. It's it's tough to transition, man. It's hard. It's hard. It's not the same, is it? No, no, but I think most tennis players can play golf, can play basketball, can play football, soccer. Yeah. But a lot of other sports can't play tennis. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Hardest sport in the world. I, I still think it's the hardest sport in the world. Oh, that's a goodie. Tennis is the hardest sport in that's the world. That's a goodie. I, I, I want to hear. I'm, 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 go ahead, Dre. Yeah, nah. Oh, oh, what the fuck out of here and fuck with Oh, this day day? This is crazy. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. You oh, see the stands? The stands, the pads is crazy. crazy. He ready to bump the and run. The uniform is crazy. The swag is crazy. <laughs> this, that's, that's oh, the stance is yeah. crazy. That's insane. So, well, hold on. So what was this? This was like practice squad, Dre? Like, what was going on here? All right, so. I had uh, my senior year. That's a great no, white game sorry, right there. My junior year, we're playing, and our football team is getting ready for the bowl. So they come to the game to hype it up, you know what I'm saying, talk before they go bowl. And I tell Coach D, like, yo, I want to play in the, the spring game. Like, this will be my last chance. 
to ever play football in my life. So I just want to come out there for a, pl a couple of plays. He's like, all right, great. Fast forward to March. The spring game was on a Friday. On Monday, I went to his office like, Coach D, you said I could play in the spring game. I'm here. He's like, all right, come to practice on Wednesday. That'll be our last practice before the spring game. We'll put you in a couple of plays. We'll get you. So that's what that was. People were like, yo, he sucked at football. I didn't play football. He didn't play, he played in the spring game. You know, you know, I went out by salt bait though. But, but I tell you what, that was one of the best experiences of my life, man. I lined up in the spring game at Michigan State University. That's right. I got jammed crazy and I jumped off. So I, I jumped off the left, left. But <laughs> that was a crazy experience. And I, yeah. and I appreciate it. You look it. good, though. You look, you look yeah, good. You look like you know what you're doing. Good. That's all I meant. fucked up out look, there. That's a bad. legendary picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the fuck with the fuck yeah. out of here. Uh, is Francis Tiafo right? Is tennis the hardest sport to play in the world? Fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck out of here. Y'all ever seen Francis Tiafo play basketball? Nah. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> hey, Fred, man, fuck out of here. Number one, listen, I got- <laughs> Fuck out of here. Like, I got a lot of respect for, for tennis players as a whole, Francis, like, it's tough. Any sport is tough. Yeah. Like, to make it to the level that we, it's tough. But like, there's a piece of like, yo, I'm out here by myself, it's tougher. There's also a piece of like, nigga, it's way harder to make five guys be on the same page and then a guy sub in and pull one guy out and then they gotta get on the same, like, stop it, bro. It's just but you one on one though, one on one. Mano e mano, me and you, like, it's just me and you. But as a hooper, you done play one-on-one -on -one before. But I'm just saying sport, I was like boxing, it's just me and you, one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. I, I get the, you bring your best, I bring my best. Mm -hmm. That is the prime example, may the best man win that. May the That's best man win. Okay. That's a fact. I just, I think, I, I can't speak on Friday. That's my guy. That's, you know, that's, that's my guy. Yeah, I fuck with friends. But hardest sport in the world, man. Tennis, like, that's footwork. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's a lot of footwork. So, a lot of athletes don't have that footwork. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You need it. You need, you got to be able to dance out there. Yeah, that's true. And you can look at somebody on the court and be like, man, that nigga got two left feet. Like, yeah. he can't even go left on the court. Like, <laughs> you can go you think, fuck around the cup, fuck around the clay court. Drag the legs. <laughs> but somebody backhand out there may be weak. That's a fact. Like, everybody got weak. I, I, it's I can't go. Of nah, all of fuck out of here, Mel. I am not. Uh, tennis uh, the hardest sport. I, fuck. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> uh, listen, what is the hardest sport? Me personally, I think football. Okay. 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 I think football. I got a different answer. What's the answer? So, and I t and, and look, y'all tell me. What is when, your answer, bro? Look, <laughs> nah, this is not. I got. I got to give you a context. I need. I, I got to give you context. I'm sitting around with a bunch of athletes, right? Mike Vick, I consider to be one of the most athletic people I've ever seen play and play football, came, went away from the game, came back and was still elite level talent. Mm -hmm. He told me that baseball was the hardest sport to play because it don't matter how athletic you are, you could be the best athlete, jump the highest vertical, strong as fuck. It's all about eye hand coordination and timing and shit that you just can't teach. So that's why you see guys you know what I mean? I look like my own, my thing. They shooting the three as hand out coordination exactly, and timing. Right. And fuck out of here. You <laughs> said, <laughs> fuck out of here. Hey, this is me. Hey, this is this me. Hey, this is Mike. Fuck out of here. You can't tell me a sport that you can be 60 pounds overweight and still excel at is the hardest fucking sport. Well, so that's the thing. It's, it's because of it's such a specialized skill set. You know what I mean? Of like the timing, the 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 pitching, and the, the all that shit. You just took it back to baseball, man. Yeah, nah, because that's what he that's what he told me, and I was just like, oh shit, okay, I, I get it now. Tennis is hard as fuck, though. Let's like, like yeah, tennis, nah. tennis, tennis is hard. Tennis, tennis is like, golf, right? Yeah, right. tennis is. You ain't sliding your feet on golf, though. I mean, but it's different because yeah. it's like I don't play golf. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. you know what I mean, Lord? I play with people tennis? that hit the ball 300 yards. Soccer. Soccer. You're doing all this shit with your feet. Like, soccer, I mean, you can, 90 soccer, minutes yeah, but soccer, you can't, you can't use your hands and shit. You can't, you can't. But your natural instinct may be like, you know what I mean? But wow. tennis is like, yeah. I, tennis, I, I get what you said, friends, but basketball hard as shit too, hard bro. Like, shit. Fuck out of here. You can't out here. Fuck out of here, friends. Hey, friend. Everything like, is hard, man. When you at the top level, bro, fucking NASCAR. Part of the left, left, left and next question. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, yo. Wow. Yo, nah, he caught me. God wow. damn it, I'ma get your ass, motherfucker. Yo, Melo, 
Kai is back at it again, motherfucker, goddammit. Kai was asked, who is the GOAT basketball player? GOAT basketball player. Paul George. Are you, are you, I'm leaving. Paul George is the best player. Kobe. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony. The fact Anthony. that you didn't say your dad first is crazy to me. That's, I don't, obviously the GOAT has levels though. Like, he don't, he don't even gotta. He's trying to say this. He doesn't have a He don't butt. even gotta be talked about like. I know where he's going at. What's under sale need to be spoken on. You feel right, like right. I'm teaching that, that from, the, yeah, from, yeah. from a young age. You understand? You ain't yeah. got to feel up. I'm fucking with it. Because you ain't got to feel a, a way about having another fam like favorite player. Like, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. My favorite player wasn't anybody else's favorite player. Some mm -hmm. people don't, ain't like that. I had a, That was my favorite. A certain player was my favorite player. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So with him, he around me so much. Like, it's just we. Nigga, we are like. Dad, I listen. Answer the question, champ. I don't even. <laughs> but listen, I'm telling you some real shit. He don't even. He separates me from the conversation every right. single time. Okay. Right. It ain't like it's, yo, Paul George is my over you. It's like, Paul you George is here. mine. Yeah, you over, you over here. I hold you to a different standard. Right. You get what I'm saying? All right. So I ain't mad at I, because I we talk about it. So I ain't mad at you saying, Paul George just look crazy complex. How you slip and cut that and all that. And made it seem like me and my son is going at it. I feel it. I feel it. So. Fuck it with the fuck out of here. Not being your son's favorite. I fuck with the fact that he puts me to the side and, and he don't put me in that category. Right. But fuck out of here because you keep trying me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm, you get what I'm saying? Keep trying. So. That's their job. It's, it's, it's here. March is here. Like it's, it's I'm back at it. And I'm in there. I'm getting. I'm get, I'm, I'm locking in with him. Now, now we about to see you old enough, nigga. You, you about to be seventeen. You talking about going to college? You, I want to see where you at. You want to see where I'm at? I want to see where you at. <clears throat> and that's the real. You do what you got to do. Yeah. Then I'll hand it to you. Call a foul, motherfucker. I'm bringing me though. I'm bringing what you think yeah. is up there on the mantle, like. You know what I'm saying? You forget, I'm still in the gym with you. I'm. So you got ones coming soon. Oh, one, one, ones and one thousand percent. You gonna win? Am I gonna win? I never lost an NBA one on one. Turn to the ball, ball real quick. Never lost. Never NBA never one on one. <laughs> so you win. God, I'm gonna. Yeah, he don't I, think you're gonna win. Who him? He does not think you're gonna win. No, he no, he thinks that I'm not gonna take it serious. Like I'm just gonna get out there, couple plays. I I, I ain't gonna defend them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a really. He, he's not expecting because to I know, the I, Also, because I know where I want him to be at. So, this is your Jake Shuttlesworth moment. This is, but I ain't gonna Jake Shuttlesworth him. <laughs> I ain't gonna kick the ball over. I ain't gonna no! kick the ball. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna have mama talking about Jesus! I ain't gonna have that. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we gonna lock in. We're gonna lock in. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I love the confidence in that little yeah, thing. Because that little thing is, I love it. But, Paul George, I mean, it's it's public knowledge. Like we all know that we talked about that before. Yeah, that every all the yeah. young hoopers, that's the yeah. Yeah. the prototype. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Wing, could dribble, do all, all everything. Both sides of the you know play yeah, both two sides. Way play. Like it's yeah. you know what I mean. No, for sure. I get them, it. Them, them wings that's so slender and mm -hmm. gonna be six seven, six eight, six nine, and a little shame guard. Yeah, you got to You got to come in like that. It's if you're gonna go in the game and create a player, you're gonna create that. You gotta create player. yourself tall, that's long, yeah. with the with Absolutely. a J, that can get to the cup, dribble, dribble, yeah. dribble. That's what you're gonna create. I ain't even go to school. I put Fordham University because it's yeah. in the Bronx. <laughs> PG smooth, you know what I'm <laughs> like. <laughs> for sure. People get mad at that though, like. Nah, if you he, he, get mad at that, 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 that's his favorite player. Like, Luke, I'm kidding. And I, I, I feel bad for PG too because it's like, you get, he get darts thrown at him yeah, like for no reason. Like, oh, you ain't shit. How you his favorite player? Like, he get darts when every time yeah, Kyle nah, bigs him up. So, you know, Kyle took PG as the guy, respectfully took him as, that's my guy. Like, that's the, right. you know what I mean? Like, I had Bernard King and like, you know what I mean? A lot of people have been like, why you the fuck are you like Bernard King? Like, that's my guy. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Bernard mm -hmm. King was, was my guy. Fucking with her fuck out of here. I'm, Not being a child's favorite athlete. I'm fucking with it. Because if there's a dad that's like, yo, I want my son to play basketball. Like, come on, play. I'm the total opposite in the spectrum. Right. I'm like, 
You don't want to play no play. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it like, play the trumpet, nigga. I, you like, that. Go do something else. Like, <laughs> you want to play, I'll lock all the way in yeah. with you. Like, my son now, he's seven. He's starting to want to play. Like, he right. want to be on the court now. So, like, we locking in. But, like, I've never once, like, he go to the gym with me all the time. I never put a basketball in his hand. Right. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, right. so I'm the total opposite end. So I fuck with it because, number one, you've been raised to have your own mind. Number two, that's telling me you stand on what you believe. You standing right. on business. Absolutely, like, every single time. I ain't just not my dad because I have to say that. Like, fuck that. Like, nah, this is what it is. That's yeah. a fact. And so I respect that because that shows you've been raised, right? Like, you've been raised to have your own mind. What my mom preached to me growing up is like, you don't be a follower. You be a leader. You use your own mind. Like, that's what I preach to my son. Like, mm -hmm. bro, don't do that because they did that. Like, you have your own mind. Don't say that because have your own mind. Like, that's my son's, like I said, he's seven. Like, that's what I'm pushing now. Right. And it's that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so you, so when somebody asks you a question, you say what Kyan think. Absolutely. Not what you think they want you to say. That's a right. fact. Right, right, right. Like, his mama wanted, she clearly wanted him to say, <laughs> Yo, daddy. Yeah, yeah. Clearly not. Nah. Fuck that. I'm not saying that. That's not what I think. That's not what I believe. And although he believes you're great, right? Yeah. Like, but in his mind, he ain't even looking it's at different. that. Like, nah, it's totally different. It, yeah. like, that, that's my pops. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. my pops, man. Yeah. Like, and so I respect, so I'm fucking with it. Yeah, I respect y'all opinions, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? As a non-athlete, you know what I mean? As an entertainer, as a comedian. Fuck out of here, B. You know what I'm saying? Meryl Jr., I'm looking at you, motherfucker. You think you funnier than me? We gonna roast each other as soon as I get to dinner tonight, all right? We gonna see who's the funniest motherfucker in the house, all right, B? And when they ask you in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you say, an entertainer like my dad, but more, but better? Bro, take that but better shit out. <laughs> but better. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing it out here. I right, 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, Draymond Green in the motherfucking house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mellow to God, your boy the kid Meryl, the human direct flap. Let's play, you know what I'm saying? Let's go, baby. Turn it up. Yeah, every Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Don't miss it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>